Hey, what's going on, people? Hope you guys are doing good. So today, I decided that I'm finally gonna give you my home office tour. This is where I make all of my YouTube videos, and uh, I gotta say, like, I'm really happy with this setup. It's come a long way. I've been here for about two years now, and this is the happiest that I've been. So let's go ahead and do a uh, little quick tour. Man, I really need the dust. That brings me into this video's sponsor, Shark. I partner with them to tell you all about the Shark Power Detect cordless vacuum because it has been a game changer for my office in order to keep that dust down. So when Shark decided to send me out a Power Detect cordless stick vacuum with auto empty system, I was super pumped to try it out. But as a current Dyson owner, I gotta say after using it, I'm impressed and depressed. This thing is very versatile and you can use it in almost any circumstance around your house. And I can't wait to tell you more about it. It has a solid base that charges and empties the Shark cordless power detect. There's a place to keep the included eight inch duster crevice tool and the pet multi-tool. Shark also includes an odor neutralizer puck that attaches to the top of the dust container on the base. It actually smells pretty good. And it does a great job at keeping weird smells at bay. This is important since the bin can hold up to 45 days worth of dust and dirt. Personally, we try to empty it after every use but there are times where we forget. Speaking of the bin, I love that it doesn't use bags. This makes it not only cheaper to maintain, but also quicker to empty. This collection system allows it to lock away dust and debris with up to 1,000 times less dust exposure. The Shark Cordless Power Detect makes cleaning not only easy, but fast. It's as simple as undocking, pressing the power button, and selecting one of the three modes by using the trigger button. These modes consist of Eco, Detect, and Boost. Eco mode delivers a great cleaning experience while also lasting up to 70 minutes on a single charge. This is perfect for everyday cleaning of light debris on carpet, hard floors, and collecting dust in the corners and edges in hard to reach areas. Boost mode ramps things up to maximum suction power. It's perfect for deep cleaning, challenging messes, thicker carpets, or for homes with pet hair. Or in my case, it's great for cleaning up after a baby. Detect mode is the mode I'm typically using since it automates adjustments. It allows the vacuum to intelligently increase suction power based on detected dirt levels. It balances power and efficiency, switching suction strength as needed across carpets, hard floors, and along edges. I love this mode because you can see it working in real time through the LED lights located on the head of the vacuum. These modes work in conjunction with the redesigned Duo Clean Detect nozzle, which eliminates debris being pushed around with every backstroke, a common issue among most other vacuums. The Shark Cordless Power Detect uses multi-directional technology which allows it to capture more dirt, dust, and debris no matter the direction you're pushing or pulling. Another unique feature on the Shark Cordless Power Detect is the Multi-Flex Wand. This is something I didn't know I needed until I needed it and then I tried it and now it's hard to go back. With a simple push of a button, the wand on the Shark Cordless Power Detect flexes, allowing the vacuum to reach under furniture and other hard-to-reach locations. Normally, I would need to move furniture around or slide out my couch in order to get to these spots, but with the Shark Cordless Power Detect, I just bend and snap. All jokes aside, it is a great feature that you have to try yourself in order to understand the true benefits of having it. It will speed up all of your cleaning sessions, I guarantee you. Now obviously these are all the reasons why I'm impressed with this vacuum. Why am I depressed? Well, you can get all of this for under 500 bucks. Meanwhile, I paid almost double for my Dyson and it has almost the same suction power. You see where I'm getting at here? Don't be like me. All right, so let's start over in this area right here since we're already here. This is my entertainment section. So I have all of my gaming stuff down here in the entertainment console that I picked up from Ikea. I think it looks great. I just wish that it had some type of back plate to hide the wires, but overall, very happy with it. And then I have my TV from TCL along with my sound bar. The entertainment center that I'm using is the Fuljabo TV stand. I also have the matching coffee table and wall shelves. It's pretty cool. It has like an industrial design and it brings like this rustic style to a room, which I'm definitely feeling. I'll link it down below so you can learn a little bit more about it. Behind the TV stand, I have a Govi RGB ICW LED light strip. It's a pretty premium light strip for the price. It has a built-in microphone so it can react to different sounds. It gets really bright. It has tons of different settings and colors to choose from within the app, and it doesn't give me any flickering issues whenever I'm filming in this direction. The TV I'm currently using is the TCL QM8 65-inch mini LED QLED, and it's been making waves in the tech world due to its cost of performance.
performance. Of course, this is a 4K TV. It has a native refresh rate of 120 hertz that can ramp up to 240 hertz when using VRR for gaming. It has 1080 local dimming zones and a peak brightness of 2321 nits, which surprisingly delivers excellent black levels. And on top of that, it supports all major HDR formats like Dolby Vision IQ, HDR10+, HDR10, and HLG. When looking at it from the side, you'll be surprised at how thin this TV is. And on top of that, it has excellent viewing angles. It runs Google TV OS, so that means it has Google Assistant built in, but it's also compatible with Amazon's platform and Apple HomeKit, and it offers seamless integration with other smart home ecosystems. Connectivity is also pretty robust. It offers four HDMI ports, two of which are HDMI 2.1, and then we also have an eARC port. It also has three USB ports, two on the back and then one on the side. It has an ethernet port and it supports Wi-Fi 6. Another cool feature about this TV is the backlit remote. I love how it lights up when you grab it or even approach it, depending how far away you are. But once it lights up, the buttons themselves actually look like stickers. It just looks really cool. And the best part is you get all this for under 900 bucks and possibly even cheaper during sales. Oh yeah, and I almost forgot. The audio setup on the TV is also pretty good with a total output of 80 watts. It supports Dolby Atmos and DTS Virtual X and it has an immersive sound experience overall, but I would definitely step up to a soundbar if you have the budget and you don't have to spend a ton of money to get a great experience. For instance, the one that I'm using is under $200. This is the TCL S55H soundbar and subwoofer combo and it comes in at around $130. It's a 2.1 channel system that delivers a total peak power of 220 watts. It supports Dolby Atmos and DTS Virtual X. The wireless subwoofer features a 5.5 inch driver and it does add impactful bass without the clutter of additional wires minus the power cable. I place mine next to my sofa and sometimes even under it for a more immersive bass experience and it works pretty good. The soundbar supports things like AI sonic room calibration which automatically adjusts the sound settings to suit your room's acoustics. There's six different EQ settings including standard, movie, music, voice, game, and sports. In terms of connectivity, the TCL S55H features HDMI eARC 2.0 and for wireless you get Bluetooth 5.2 while optical and 3.5 millimeter auxiliary inputs provide additional connection options. The soundbar is TCL TV ready and Roku TV ready, so everything is going to be very straightforward when it comes to setting things up. The soundbar is very lightweight and compact, perfect for small setups like I have here. Plus, you have mounting holes on the back, so you can easily wall mount this if you want to. Honestly, the only downside to this, which I don't even know if it's a downside considering the price point, is the build quality. Like, it's not high end by any means, it's more plasticky, and it definitely doesn't feel like a premium soundbar, but the experience that you're gonna get and the quality of sound that it outputs is excellent. Now, one thing I absolutely love are my custom paintings here. I actually had these painted by a YouTuber. I did it several years ago, but they've been in storage since because they're huge, and I figured, Now's a great time to bust them out. So let's talk about lighting for a minute because that's extremely important when it comes to video content creation. And I have a ton of lights in this office. Beginning over here, I have an Amaran 100XS and then I have an Amaran Spotlight attached to it. And that is a gobo that's projecting lighting over here on my wall. And it just looks really cool, very professional, very high end. And I think it adds like an elegant or more modern touch to this room. One of my biggest pet peeves when it comes to building an office in a small room is trying to keep the lighting off the floor because that takes a ton of space with C-stands and stuff. So I picked up these impact uh, wall mount spigots and they're great, especially if you have studs or some type of concrete behind your wall. Now staying on the topic of Amaran, I have two more lights over here for my desk setup. So if I'm doing like a live stream or maybe a conference call, or if I just wanna shoot at my desk, I have two 60Ds right here that have small domes on them. I'll explain how I have them mounted on my desk once we get to this portion of the video. For now, I have another Amaran light right here. This is the limited edition white 60D and it looks awesome. I just have a bouncing light off of my ceiling to add a little bit of fill. And again, I have this light mounted on an impact wall mount spigot. And what's cool about this one is I can actually attach a camera to it if I want to. There's several different mods that you can do in order to get a lot of functionality out of this thing. And then in the corner here, right below my 100XS, I have the brand new Govi Floor Lamp 2. This isn't the pro version, so it doesn't have the built-in speaker, but it does get nice and bright. I love the black color. And then over here where I have my wood panel wall, 
Up top, I have the Govee wall lights. These are also really cool. And again, you can add like that transition gradient effect to these. Now I do have to quickly shout out Wood Veneer Hub because they sent out all of these wood panels for me to do this wall and it looks beautiful. It only took about a half a day to do. You do have to get the correct saw because the way that the back is done, it's in felt. So if you don't use the correct saw, that felt will just get shredded and you can damage the actual planks. What I love about Wood Veneer Hub is how fast they ship their products, how easy they are to install, and the quality of these wood panels. These things are rock solid, so once they're on, they're not coming off unless you want to take them off, and you can even reuse them after taking them off in case you move to a new location. Not only do these wood panels bring a fresh new aesthetic to a room, but the ones that I have even help reduce room reverb, which is definitely a plus considering I'm always recording in here. All I know is ever since I added these wood panels to my office, it's created a different vibe that I absolutely love. And I'm gonna be picking up more for around the house along with the office upstairs. And the last light that I wanna show you is like a take on Nano Leaf's sky panels or skylights. This is Gobi's ceiling light. And while it's not as cool, I would say, as the Nano Leaf version, it's significantly cheaper, it's very bright, and it has some really cool effects as well. All right, so let's talk about the area where I get all of my work done. All of the videos that you guys watch, this is where I edit them. This is my cockpit. This thing has come a long way and I've never been happier with it. I'm not gonna get into too much detail about every specific item because this video would take forever, but I wanna touch on some of the new things that I've added and some of the things that I think you should check out. Starting with the desk, this is from Uplift. I love the natural wood top, and I also really appreciate the way that the paddle is designed. So it curves out so you can easily control the desk without even looking at it. You can also lock the paddle so it can't be activated without putting in a specific combination, which I really appreciate due to my son. It supports quite a bit of weight, and it's just been rock solid these past few years. In order to free up space on top of my desk, I mounted a few things underneath it, including my M2 Ultra Max Studio and the OWC Thunder Bay Flex 8. Next to my M2 Ultra Max Studio, I have a dual NVMe enclosure from Sabrent. This is where I store all of my current projects. And since this is a Thunderbolt 3 enclosure, it has excellent speeds so I can edit directly off of these drives and it's small enough that I can take it with me whenever I travel. Inside the enclosure, I have two 4 terabyte NVMEs from Lexar and I raid them together in order to create eight terabytes of extremely fast storage and it's never given me any issues so far. Okay, so moving to the top of my desk, I'm pretty boring when it comes to peripherals. I'm I'm using an Apple Magic Keyboard with Touch ID and Number Pad, along with a Logitech MX Master 3S. For all of my editing needs, I use a Torbox Elite. You can use this thing in Photoshop, Final Cut, Adobe Premiere, or even DaVinci Resolve, and you can program all of the buttons on it to do exactly what you want. In fact, I love it so much that I went ahead and pre-ordered the new one, which is a clear, transparent design, and it supports the iPad. I've tried a ton of different video editing controllers from Loop Deck and other manufacturers, and I always end up going back to my Torbox simply because it gives me the most reliable experience and the connection is rock solid for Bluetooth. Now with that said, I have recently added a Stream Deck Plus to my setup. Initially, I was going to use this for video editing, but I found the experience to be not as good as the Torbox. Even though I don't use it as a video editing controller, it's still really useful for my setup because I can control my Amaran lights from here, my Govee lights, or quickly launch different apps. So behind that, I have probably the centerpiece of my setup, which is the HexCal Studio. This thing has a ton of useful features built Built right into it that make content creation or just working at your desk for long periods of time much easier. For instance, it has a 40 inch ultra wide LED light bar and the way that it's angled makes it glare free. Now with this lighting system, it has 1,280 possible light configurations with adjustable brightness and color temperature. You can control all of that through the buttons located on the left hand side. You can even favorite or save presets that way you can quickly access them on the fly. And what's crazy is that it has a 95% CRI for accurate color reproductions. Also, the way that this is designed, it reduces eye strain by 95% because it has non-directional task lighting. Now, in terms of build quality, it's made of aircraft grade aluminum construction with stainless steel legs. These legs can be extended. Inside the unit itself, you have extensions that you can screw on to raise it up even higher. It has a weight capacity of 45 kilograms or 99 pounds, so it's suitable for multiple monitors. So going back to that internal compartment, you can store a ton of stuff in here, including your power bricks, excess cables, 
or just random accessories like SSDs. There's even advanced cable organization all along the back, so that way you can really tighten up those loose cables. There's also a couple of USB type A ports on the far left side. These work in tandem with the USB A ports on the outside of the unit, so that way it gives you pass-through support for drive connectivity. Next to those two external type A ports, you'll also find a USB type C port used for quick charging. Now speaking of charging, this is really where the HexCal Studio shines with its power management. It has a comprehensive power distribution system that supports up to 14 devices simultaneously. It has eight power outlets with surge protection and circuit breaker functionality on the backside. You also have those USB-C and USB type A charging ports, plus an additional 20 watt Qi wireless charging pad right above that on the far left hand side that I just recently discovered. With this Qi wireless charging pad, you can charge two devices simultaneously. I really do like the HexCal Studio. I love the functionality and I even like the way that it looks, although a white version would be awesome. Okay, so moving up to my monitors, I'm using two Apple Studio displays. Now previously I had a Pro XDR display, but I sold it in order to get two of these. The biggest reason why I did this was to free up more desk space since these monitors have webcams and speakers built in. Also, I don't edit HDR footage, so having that XDR display was pretty much going to waste. And when you're looking at the regular non-HDR brightness of the XDR display, it's around 500 nits, whereas on the studio displays, it's 600 nits. So technically speaking, I'm getting a brighter experience with these two. And even though the XDR display does have other benefits like the 32 inch size and a 6K resolution, plus that impeccable design on the back, these two 27 inch studio displays at 5K resolution are just fine for me. Now let's talk about how I have these Amaran lights mounted to my desk. For this, I'm using Falcom gear tree clamps and poles, and then I have a center extension bar in between that connects the two. Now on the poles themselves, you can use different clamps and accessories. So I have a traditional clamp attached to the poles along with two monitor arms. That way I can raise these lights up and down. The extension bar is there for me to attach different accessories depending on what I'm doing. So if I want an overhead shot, I can attach another arm or let's say I'm doing a roll right here at my desk and I wanna use a shotgun mic in order to keep it out of the frame. I can just use a Falcom mic arm and then that is possible with this extension bar. I freaking love the Ulanzi Falcom Gear Tree series. When they first announced this collection, I purchased almost everything they had, including the really expensive very poles. And I can't recommend this stuff enough, especially if you have a small space and want to take advantage of that space as much as possible. Now to the left of my desk, I have my podcast or voiceover mic. I'm bouncing between two right now, the Beacon mic and then the Rode NT1 5th Gen, which has just been a staple for me. I love the sound signature from this mic and I even like Rode software. However, Beacon's mic looks more like a Shure SM7B and I do like the RG GB ring on it, plus Beacon software is significantly better than Rhodes, in my personal opinion. If any of you guys have experience with either mic, let me know which one you prefer and why down in the comments. And for reference, right now you're listening to the Rode NT1 5th Gen. And of course, I have the Rode mic attached to a Rode desktop mic stand. This is the DS1, I believe. It's around 100 bucks. Now also over here on the left-hand side, I have my headphone stand, which is mounted underneath the desk to keep things nice and clean. For headphones, I'm using the Rode NTH headphones with a green cable directly from Rode, it looks awesome. The reason why I like these headphones is that you can pick up an optional microphone that attaches to the side. This is great for gaming, but it's also great for doing voice to text. These headphones are under 150 bucks, and for that price, you're getting extremely comfortable headphones. And being that my bald head is extremely sensitive, these headphones I can wear for hours without having to take them off. Moving over to the right side of my desk, I have the Elgato prompter attached to a regular Elgato arm. What's crazy is that the Elgato prompter has a built-in display. Typically, you would have to spend several hundred bucks to get this feature, and the display isn't bad at all, and it gets relatively bright for indoor use. And they recently rolled out an update that allows the prompter to track your voice. This makes reading scripts not only more natural, but much easier because you're not dependent on a scrolling speed. But the other reason why the Elgato prompter is legit, you can use this as a secondary, or in my case, third display for your setup. While yes, the display is very small, it's perfect for showcasing widgets or other pieces of information that you might need to access multiple times throughout the day. The camera that I primarily use the Elgato prompter with is the ZV-E1 and I have that attached to a Falcom tabletop tripod that I can quickly adjust the height in order to match the prompter. Outside of that, that pretty much does it for my desk setup. If you notice something that I didn't talk about that you're interested in, go ahead and check the description because chances are I linked it down there. So there you go. That was a quick look at my home office and everything that I've done in order to make it a space for me to create all of the content that you guys see on YouTube and social media. 
If you have any questions about anything that you saw in this video, or if I forgot to link something, just let me know in the comments and I'll definitely send over a link or give you that information. Outside of that, I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please consider giving this video a thumbs up. Subscribe for more content just like this, and I'll see you beautiful people in the next one.